400 inch Ford versus 400 inch Chevy. They both have displacement, ported heads, cams, intakes, even power outlets. Hello everybody, I'm Richard Oldner and as always, welcome to the channel. Today we've got a Ford versus Chevy. We've got 400 inch Ford versus 400 inch Chevy. They've got all the good stuff. They've got good intake manifolds, big carburetors, high flowing heads, roller cams, lots of compression. And since they're 400 inches, lots of displacement. We even have some power adders like this blower on the shed. Are you an LS guy looking for a good deal on a camshaft? I've got two of them. I've got the low buck truck that adds about 60 horsepower and plenty of low speed power. If you're looking for a little bit more power on the big end, I've got the truck plus adds another 15 horsepower. Right now the cams are on sale, just $199 shipped. And if you order in November, you get a free shirt. Okay, let's start out our comparison, our 400 Ford versus the 400 Chevy. I'm going to show you a couple of different variations of the 400 Ford first. So this was a 408 stroker with flat top Molly pistons. It had a Speedmaster crank and rods in it in a stock 351 Windsor block. It was equipped with TrickFlow 205 twisted wedge heads. We had a TFS camshaft also in this first combination, which was a 574, 595 lift, 236, 248 degree duration, and 110 degree lobe separation angle. It also had a trick flow single plane intake manifold on it, although we did a comparison. I'm going to go over that between uh, the trick flow single plane and an RPM air gap dual plane. In fact, the one I'm showing here first is the dual plane intake manifold, inch and three quarter headers. 1.6 rockers and the the headers are inch and three quarter so in this first configuration with a dual plane intake manifold with the rpm air gap our trick flow combination basically <laughs> our 400 ford made 534 horsepower and 543 foot pounds of torque so it did pretty well and had a nice uh, solid torque curve as we would expect here's what happened when we replaced the intake manifold we basically did a single plane, dual plane intake swap. So we took off the RPM air gap and installed the trick flow single plane intake manifold. Carburetor remained the same. We did have to do some jetting, but basically this was just an intake change. And you could see we picked up a lot of power, 569 horsepower, 570 horsepower. Peak torque was down slightly to 543 foot pounds. But you can see, as we normally expect, the dual plane made more power on this combination up to 4,600, and then the single plane made more power after that. We did run one other combination with this, and on this 408, we what we did was add a much bigger camshaft. In this case, it was a bigger trick flow camshaft, and this camshaft was 595 lift, and we went up in duration pretty dramatically. So it was a 250, 254 at 50, uh, retaining the 110 degree lobe separation angle and here's what happened when we put the bigger camshaft in this is going to get a little confusing so i'm going to remove the sink i'm going to remove the dual plane so basically this is just the cam change this is the same combination both of them a single plane intake manifold same carburetor same headers all that stuff all we did really was change the camshaft so we went from a 236 248 to a 250 254 and as expected we gain a lot of power on the top the bigger camshaft started making more power at about 53 or 5400 peak power was up to 601 at 6700 peak torque was down slightly to 533 foot pounds what we did basically is just we're pushing the the power production higher in the rev range and there was a loss below 5300 rpm as you can see well, our final combination with the Ford here, what we did was, hey, let's add some nitrous to it. <laughs> so I'll get rid of our, we'll get rid of our milder combination here. And this just shows you what happened with the nitrous. We, we used a 67 nitrous jet and a 54 fuel jet. This pushed the peak power from 601 and 553 up to 788 horsepower and 692 foot pounds of torque. So a pretty solid, you know, stroker 400 Ford combination. Now let's check out the Chevy. Okay guys, now that we've taken a look at the 400 inch stroker Ford, let's take a look at a 400 inch Chevy. Now on the Chevy, we did not use a factory small block 400 block. We actually used an aftermarket block from the guys at Speedmaster. And what we did was combine a 
4125 bore with a three, uh, 370, 3750 stroke, which is different than the Ford. The Ford was uh, basically a 4030 bore with a 4 inch stroke. But on the Chevy, we went with a bigger bore and shorter stroke. You guys can argue <laughs> all you want about which one of those makes more difference. But again, flat top pistons, um, six, six inch rods in this thing. We first equipped this thing with a Comp XR294R camshaft, which is a hydraulic roller, which was a 540-562 lift, a 242-248 degree duration split at 110 degree lobe separation angle. We topped this thing with a set of Dart 225 CNC ported heads. <clears throat> we ran a few different intake manifolds on it, but the first combination we want to look at, it had a, a Dart single plane on it and a... 950 XP Holly carburetor on. We had inch and three quarter headers, you know, uh, 1.5 roller rockers on. I think those, those were crane gold roller rockers. This was about 11 and a quarter to one. And when we ran it in this configuration, the combination produced 575 horsepower out here at like 6,600. And peak torque checked in at 513 foot pounds at 5,000. So it did well. But one of the things that we did was we put in like we did with the Ford, we stepped up to a, a much bigger camshaft. And so here's what happened when we put the camshaft in. You can see um, <coughs> the camshaft. This one came from the guys at Bullet. We ran this combination. It was a 264, 270 at 50. And quite a bit more lift, 671, 666. So it was a you know bigger cam kind of all the way around. This was a solid roller camshaft. We also put a larger Holly on this thing. This had a thousand CFM Holly. It had the dark single plane intake manifold and it had a one inch tapered combo spacer. And equipped with that combination, we made quite a bit more peak power. You could see peak power was up at 619 horsepower. And even peak torque was up a little bit, 529 foot-pounds of torque at 5,300 RPM. It did very well. In fact, before we put that camshaft in it, we also ran the milder combination with the smaller uh, extreme energy comp cam in it. We ran it with an 871 blower on, and it worked very well. We had an 871, two blower carburetors on this. We ran fairly low boost, five or six pounds. And this thing made like uh, eight, what would we make, 820 or 830, so it did very well. Okay, after running our combination with the milder camshaft and the 871 blower, which made over 820 horsepower, did very well. We eventually upgraded the NA combination, and we put a bigger camshaft in it, as, as we described. It made more power NA, and it also made more power once we added boost, because that's what always happens. I've yet to see a camshaft make more power NA and then not make that more power under boost, as I indicated. But here's what happened when we took our wilder combination with the big camshaft in it. And what we did was we added a Vortec supercharger to it. And you could see... You know, amazing power. This was a Vortec YSI. This was a uh, just under 16 pounds of boost, 15.9 psi. We also removed the 1000 CFM Holly carburetor and put our 850 CSU blow through carburetor on there. There was no intercooler on this. We ran this on good gas. We we put uh, 100 octane race gas in it, and then we put the bonnet on top of the carburetor, the blow through bonnet from the guys at CSU. Kevin does a good job over there, but easily over a thousand horsepower. It made a thousand twenty five and 772 foot pounds of torque. So plenty of power potential with all these. And on the Chevy, we actually did a little bit more testing than we did with the Ford because we ran into a bunch of different combinations. But no matter which one of these you pick, <laughs> you would be in good hands. But let's take a look at a quick comparison between like our 600 horsepower versions, like our NA versions of the Ford versus the Chevy. Okay, guys, now let's look at a comparison between our 400 inch Ford and our 400 inch Chevy, starting out with our 400 inch Ford. You remember from our previous combination, uh, these all had, you know, very similar things. Ported heads, good size camshafts, plenty of compression. They all had the displacement, single plate intakes, bigger carburetors, you know, uh, long tube headers and stuff. But on our 400 inch Ford, this thing made 601 horsepower and 533 foot pounds of torque. And here is the 600 horsepower version of our small block Chevy. The Chevy actually made a little bit more. It made 619 horsepower, but 
torque peak torque was actually down 529 foot pounds of torque not a lot you're talking about three or four foot, foot pounds you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between those peak torque numbers in the car because first of all it'd have to be repeatable enough for you to feel a variation between two or three foot pounds of torque it's really not very much what i want to point your attention to in a comparison between these two is the power curve was the same from 5300 up to 5900 rpm they basically basically they both basically made the same power curve but beyond that above that up near 6000 rpm and above the small block chevy made more power now let me ask you guys let me know in the comments because <laughs> i think i'm going to get these comments do you think that the Small block Chevy made more peak power because Chevys are superior in every way possible. I'm going to get those comments. Or do you think it is a bore and stroke thing? The Chevy had a bigger bore, so it wants to make more power because of the bigger bore. Or, and you should probably point at this thing that I'm go about to tell you, the fact that the small block Chevy had a quite a bit bigger camshaft in it. It was a 264, 270 at 50. And it had quite a bit more lift, 671, 661. Lift I wouldn't pay as much attention to, although because both of these heads flowed very well up to 700 lift, it could take advantage of that. Both of them had tight enough LSAs. When you compare that to the 250, 254 camshaft with 595 lift used by the Ford, do you think that the more power on top is a function of the camshaft? The other thing I want to look at, let's look down low and see, and this kind of, to me, points toward the, toward the camshaft really being the culprit, but you guys can argue about the bore and stroke and, and all of that stuff. If we look at below 52 or 5300 RPM, the smaller cammed Ford made quite a bit more power. In fact, if you if you look down here at 4,200 or so, you're going to see 484 versus 515. So it's a pretty good bit of torque difference between the Ford and the Chevy where the smaller cammed Ford is making more torque down low, but the bigger cammed Chevy is making more power on top. <laughs> Let me know in the comments. All right, you're older. Please make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I'll keep testing.